Shalom. Shalom to all of you. Yeah. So we'll continue yesterday's was a part of teaching. Yeah. So uh, let us read Genesis 1, 29 and 30. So here is where it is, uh, you know, yesterday I was telling you that man was actually the aim of creation. The crowning glory, why God wanted to create you and me so that we can take part in his uh, family, in the triune family of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Okay. And some people say, oh, God was lonely. God was never lonely because always Son and Holy Spirit is there. But overflowing from that love which they had for each other, they wanted to share it with us. Though God had created so many angels, they were not in the image of God. So he wanted somebody who's in image of him, which simply means that he in us and we in him. Okay, that is the most important thing to remember. It is not that whether we look like him or uh, it's not like that. And the what to say, the outcome of that is whatever we feel, whatever we have, you know, that exactly God knows and God feels. Okay, you should not say, oh, what God knows, I'm having this. No, no, no. Whatever you feel, yesterday we saw, you know, God told Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know, it's not a cliche that we talk. You know, we say any scripture we will quote and we'll, oh, it doesn't mean a thing. That's not with God. When Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? Jesus was very clear that I can feel what you are doing to me because we are in him and he is in us. Okay, so now this is very beautiful. You must understand. I have given you every herb that he yields a seed on the surface of the earth and every tree whose fruit yields a seed for you as fruit, as food. See, for other people or other creation, he says that I have given green herb. He has not given fruit for any other creature. Only for man. So what happens? See, you when you see fruit, you don't look on the ground for fruit. Do you look? Okay, nowadays we have potatoes and things like that, but fruit which can be eaten directly, we don't look in the ground. We always look up. Right? We look up and take. That's how we are created. We are always created to look up and take. The fruit was for us. Not for any animal. See, in some places you have monkeys destroying all the fruit. But nobody is doing anything because they consider that animal as God. No. Fruit is meant for us. That is how we were created. Rest all, grass, everything. You have to look down. If you see the cow or you see goats, what do they have to constantly eat from the ground? But man, that is God's crowning glory, who loved us so much. Always we have to look up and we have to eat the fruit where there is a seed, that's what God says. Even in that, God has created you always above animals. You, you know, you are created with so much of dignity. Yeah. So your continence always looks up. Also, you must remember that uh, when we are in, when we are talking about this triune family, there is something that God always wants. Or it is a rule for a family to stay together. 
that is they submit to one another willingly in love not that oh what what to do the woman has to submit to the husband yeah he's earning you no know, then what i it is like that if it is like that then that is not family or the husband says yeah where she'll go see it's not like that okay it should be only in love the husband says yes i am the head of the family i have to provide the woman says no he is my husband i love him so i will submit the same way the husband says yes i will listen to my wife because i know she is a godly woman i have seen so many pastors they say before god speaks to me god speaks to my wife i wait for her to see what word she gets from god this is how we are created man or woman always to be in tune with god but also to submit to one another just like the holy spirit and the son submit to the father the father listens to the son and the holy spirit the holy spirit takes from the father and son and gives to us there is no division in thought yeah so this is very important from what we got yesterday that you are created for dominion on this earth you are also created to be in in relationship with god and also for relationship with one another okay let's read uh, sorry yeah
Let's read Genesis 2, 8 and 9. Verses 15 to 18. Okay, so God planted a garden eastward of Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the eye to the eye and good for food. Okay, this probably God had already made before Adam came. In a corner he had planted a garden yeah, towards the east they say of garden of Eden yeah, and he put the man there where the Trees were a little more beautiful than the other full of the earth that was covered with trees. Okay. And in the midst was the tree of life and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. So this is important. Uh, in all these beautiful things, he also put. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of knowledge of life. Both of them looked good. Okay. Uh, you can see God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the eye and good for food. Yeah. So both of them looked good. See, this is the way that even now we see in the world. Okay. Now let's talk about money. Yeah. Now many like, this is what sometimes the church teaches nonsense, you know. Oh, you should be poor, otherwise you will be you will be a sinner, blah, blah, blah. This is what they say. And they make the people poor and they tell you that poverty is a virtue. Whereas when we look in the world, we see rich people are enjoying. Yes, if you have money, you can enjoy. Yeah, but remember whether it is, you know, the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil, both are looking good. Yeah, it is what you are going to choose that is important. Are you going to choose money over God? For everything that you, when you are earning, you will do anything to get money. Yeah, see, this is the choice that God gives you even today. Yeah, God gave even Adam. Both are looking good. Now, recently when I went uh, for the seminar with Pastor Jesudian's uh, church, you know, that is what Pastor was saying, which I actually have already taught you. But, you know, when I heard the same thing, I understood it is from the Holy Spirit. You know, you, like he said, this is what he said. He said, pastors should have their own income. And this is what I always tell you. Don't leave your job to become a pastor. You may be become a pastor, but you should always have your own income. See, when you have your income, you needn't go and squeeze dry people in your church. If you really think God has called you to be a pastor, you can be working and you can also be a pastor. Of course, maybe it is a little difficult. But guess what? God will give you everything. God, see, uh, in 15, let's see what is. And God took man and put him in the garden to tend and keep it. Very important. God didn't make Adam to sit like this and, you know, on the beach or, you know, in the garden and waste his time. No. If you listen to what Jesus says, I am working, my father is working. I see the father and I do the same thing. 
God is always working. That is what he says. Creation was done. Seventh day he rested means creation was completed. But God is always working. God is not sitting or sleeping and saying, okay, let the I created. No, it is done. That is what other religions say. No, God is always involved. God is always working. And we have to work. I don't know from where this has come to the church. So you have so much of corruption. I can't tell you. The way some churches are laundering money, that is not, see, we are pretending on the outside and doing something inside. Don't think that God is sleeping or, you know, oh, God doesn't know we can do this and pretend. Yeah, half of the people don't know who God is. That is the problem. Some people only want to do, 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 do. And then ultimately, you know, in, uh, later on in life, they give up because there is a burnout. When you don't know God and you try to do something for God, thinking that he'll be happy, then you are a failure. You know, somebody tells you to become a pastor. Some, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. This is very important. You need to work. You cannot depend on other people's income. There are some people now, Andrew Womack, he, I think for 45 years, he worked he always tells, he used to put cement flooring. Imagine, he was working in a photo studio. He was helping. He always ta talks about the jobs he was doing. And he was saying that when he followed his church, which is the Baptist church, he, he and his wife didn't have food to eat. No, you are always meant to work. That doesn't mean you are meant to overwork. Or do work just for money. No. See, man had to just tend the garden. He didn't have to do anything else. You know, he had to just clean it and keep it. The rest of the things were growing by itself. Yeah. And then the Lord God commanded, Of every tree in the garden you might eat, but the tree of knowledge and good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat you shall surely die. Now this has become like one, I don't know. The way the church preaches it is like, I don't know what. As if God is one cruel, like, you know, slave owner. Oh, God wanted to test you and God, blah, 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 blah. God did this. And, no. The, you know, um, what to say. The logic behind this is very simple. Okay, in Mark 10, you have a blind man. Okay, 49 to 52, you have a blind man whose name is Bartimaeus. Okay, and uh, Jesus is passing that way. And uh, this man, he's hearing all, you know, footsteps and a crowd coming. So you are, he asks like, you know, what's happening? He says, oh, that prophet Jesus is coming. Guess what? Bartimaeus gets all excited and starts screaming, Oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Kept on screaming that people said, Hey, shut up. Keep quiet. But guess what? He started shouting even louder. Yeah. Finally, Jesus, he was shouting so loudly that Jesus was walking. Jesus heard him and said, He stopped. The, that's what scripture says. And Jesus stood still. Okay. Remember, even in that, because Jesus is creator, in all this crowd, all this thing, he still hears our voice. Okay, so what happened? He said, call him here. And immediately the people say, hey, be of good cheer, he's calling you. See, the same people who told him to shut up, they say, ah, be happy, he's calling you. Then they brought him. For that matter, even before he could reach there, you know, the beggars in that time had to put a cloth which shows that they are begging and something is wrong with them. Yeah, Here, in nowadays, what you have? People who are able-bodied also will sit and beg. It was not like that in Jesus' time. Only those who are crippled, who had some problem would sit and beg. Or those who are really poor, who couldn't work like widows, used to sit and beg. But rest of the people used to work. So immediately he threw his garment, the beggar garment, he threw it out. And he went to Jesus. And see, this is very important. Whether it was in the beginning of time 
or it is in Mark 10, that is literally 4,500 years later, Jesus looks at him and says, what do you want me to do for you? I want to tell you, see, you are not just a dog or something God has created. You know, how many times we are, you know, dogs, we all of us have. I had one Alsatian. How many times have we asked the dog what you want? This is what the church has made human beings as compared to God. That he can do anything to us. No. He will never do anything to you without your permission, without your choice. Again, see, Jesus was not blind. Jesus could see that is a blind man. He is screaming there. But yet, he said, okay, oh, I'll make you, I'll open your eyes. No. He says, what do you want me to do for you? I want to just, you know, if you understand, if you think that whatever the church has taught you, which unfortunately is the American gospel, you know, which is a crime. That's why America is one of the worst countries today. There is no morality. There is no God there. You know, God can do anything to you. You know, whatever is happening to you, good or bad, is the choices that you have made. You must remember. God has always given you a choice. Now, there are many people, like, you know, who, because of this gospel of, you know, God is one, like, you know, Rakshas, you know, with the two horn uh, uh, crown on his head, who will call you and tell you to do whatever you want, he wants. Yeah? You think that everything which is happening to you is, you know, even the bad things God is giving. This is, this is the level to which the church has come. Okay? Sickness, and you might think good old days, no, I'm telling you even now. When people come for here, you know, healing, they tell us. The church taught us this. God gives sickness. God wants to test you. No. There is no way. He has just given you a choice like he did in the garden. He gives you choices even now. He respects you. See, when our children, no, no, I want to eat pasta. I want to eat pizza. We say, keep quiet. You eat what is there. Vegetables you have to eat. Yeah. You must understand God doesn't even treat you like a child. Oh, this is good for you. So you take it. No. From creation, he has treated you as his equal. See, I can give you a choice only if I consider you as my equal. Unfortunately, we have made God in our own imagination. <laughs> okay. God made us in his likeness, but we have made God, one God we have created, yeah, according to our own imagination, which happens to be the devil. Yeah. Saying that God, you know, he is going to do, yeah, no, God doesn't do anything. He always asks you. He's giving you a, he has given, he gave Adam a free choice. Even at Jesus' time, you can see God has God gives you a free choice. Yeah. He asks you what you want to do. Yeah. Here also, if you see, uh, you know, he says, he gives you the consequences. Now, he didn't create this tree somewhere in the, you know, with all the trees. No, in the garden where they were. So, Adam didn't have to look out after all the trees on this earth. No. In the garden. Yeah. In one small place. He said look after. Which is very light work. No. One small place, one garden, how, how much it takes. Yeah? Plus God, you know, said, uh, told the consequences. If you eat this, you will surely die. Okay. Uh, now, whether Adam understood what death was, I'm sure he did because, you know, God created him with a mind that is God's. Yeah. So if he spoke to him, surely he understood. Then God says, it is not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a helper comparable to him. Yeah, in all this, Adam was not feeling 
you know, there's somebody like my kind. See, this is how unique God had created Adam, that he was not feeling that somebody is there in creation whom he can communicate with. Yeah, so Eve came after Adam, after God told Adam not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was very good to see. Maybe even the fruit might, you know, might have been tasty. See, if the fruit was bitter, he would have spat it out. No. She ate it. So uh, here, you must understand that Eve didn't hear from God. So, you know, men have to remember this. You are the head of the family. You can't help it. You know, there are men who only listen to their mother. I have seen. They'll destroy their whole family. No, to some, when you're a child, you have to listen, yes. But all mothers and all fathers are good, no. Like, when I went for the seminar, I met some people who were saying like, you know, we feel ashamed to say what our father did. It is not nice. But God has given you a brain and you know, even if you don't know Jesus, you know what is right and what is wrong. But now when you know God, you know what is right, what is wrong. When you are small, you can't help it. What can you do? But once you grow up, remember you respect your parents, but you don't tell them, don't listen to everything they tell you to do. Men especially. Uh, I don't know. You know, it is not a responsibility for women. It is your responsibility which which I do not know. Okay, That is what God has told you to do. He created the woman later. He told you to tend to the garden. He didn't tell the woman to do that. You have to work and provide for the family. Be a good provider. If your wife works, it's nice. Because she'll understand what are the problems of working. But for her, it is already always a second occupation. It is not the primary occupation. For you, looking after your family, tending the garden, Looking after your wife, that is your primary job. Also, decisions, godly decisions, finally you have to take. That's why, see, that is why, you know, Paul or Peter says that the wife should submit. It is not, you know, that is what the church has done. Okay, the church has made woman second class. That is not the reason. It is because God has given the responsibility to man. To the man, he has given that responsibility. It is a God-given responsibility. So that's why it is better for the woman to listen to the man because provided he is doing his responsibility, if he is not doing, it is better to say bye-bye and go off because some men, I, I, I cannot tell you in counseling what we get. Okay? So remember in this, your given work, which is very light. If you are so burdened with your, with your work, reconsider what job you are doing. If you are not enjoying the work you are doing, reconsider. Yeah, God, God always gives you a choice. If you are a man, you though men and women are equal, but they are different. In physical form, in, in emotional form, in, I want to say, earthly responsibility. If you are a godly man, take that very seriously. Yeah?
45 yeah around 45 
let's uh, read genesis 3 uh, 1 to 7 Uh, John chapter 1, 3 to 5. Five, five, three to five. Romans 6, uh, verse 16. Romans 6, 16. Second Peter chapter two, eighteen and nineteen. Okay, so you have here now the fall of man. Okay, now many people say that God put the serpent to tempt Adam and Eve. That is very wicked of people who say that. But this is the problem. I'll tell you why it is. I never understood because uh, I'm a Catholic. Okay, what happens is. Now, this is not to put down any Protestant pastor. It is not like that. Because I told you, I have been in Bangalore. I was attending pastor's church only. I was not going to Catholic church most of the time. Yeah. So, what happens is, this is what is taught. That God put this serpent there to test. No. Satan became Satan because he was envious. See, there is a word in English called envy, E-N-V-Y, and jealousy. Jealousy is there for all. You know, when uh, I think in my life, I was really jealous only once, really very jealous. I felt very bad to the level of envy. Envy means, why is that person having I should have had? That is jealousy, but envy is when you try to take what that other person has or you try to hurt that person because you don't have what that person has. 
so you tried to steal it from him so this is what happened to lucifer who was an archangel archangel means the leader of the angels yeah you have gabriel you have michael you have raphael raphael is there in one of those books which the catholics include in the bible but protestants don't include yeah raphael is there and then you had lucifer lucifer was a music was the music director okay they say i mean that is what andrew teaches that through his body like you know there were so many instruments okay so he was a music or the praise and worship leader then he saw that he's created before man see again i you know what i spoke yesterday if it has not gone in your head and you don't feel proud in that way that god has created you in his likeness then i think you know i don't know what to say i don't want to say yeah but see you created became an envy of the angels i hope at least now you understand so much so that lucifer went into a serpent now was the serpent bad no but see again i think at least you know the serpent had to give permission to lucifer to enter it and speak and at that time like many preachers say the animals you know when they spoke see they didn't actually speak but adam was so much like god he could understand what the animals were saying without speaking see, even today then we see our dog if the dog is making queen 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 we say my god why is this dog crying like this you know maybe it is hurt then we search the body whether it has any hurt sometimes just plain hungry or thirsty how do we understand that because we have the mind of christ okay so this serpent which lucifer used okay it it could it was coming very close to adam and eve yeah so what did it do there what did he do and you know he came and uh, this is very important you know you can never make man do the wrong things by threatening him at least a man of god threatening him frightening him you cannot actually do but you can get him to do something through deception okay by cheating so here it is like that yeah he came to the woman see he didn't go to the man he knew that she was created after adam she had what we call second hand knowledge yeah lucifer was also on this earth to serve mankind i told you angels are created animals are created below us on the earth angels in heaven are also created below us that's why the envy you are in such a envious position okay so he comes and asks the woman cunning fellow has god told you not to eat of every tree in this garden see how he puts it this is exactly what satan does today yeah he'll tell you to cheat you know you you don't have to have sex god said not to commit adultery other things you can do but that's not what jesus said jesus said if you look at you know i put it this way nowadays at the opposite sex whether it is man or woman you see a man or a woman with lust you have already sinned yeah but look at the way satan put it and because she had second hand knowledge see here again her husband was trying to protect her he said don't even go near the tree if you go near the tree you touch the tree also you will die so he was telling her not that he was not telling her the truth he was just over protective of his wife whom he loved so much yeah he said flesh of my flesh bone of my bone what all he described when god brought eve to her not his fault yeah so you know so she says no we can eat of all but only this tree we should not eat because god said if you eat even if you touch you will surely die 
and immediately sup and says no 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 you you know uh, it is not true even if you touch you will not die you know why god told you not to eat because if you eat you will become like him now is he lying no he is not see we are created in christ okay we are created so that we have see if you read uh, uh, john all things were made through him and without him nothing was there that was made means everything that is there in existence is in and through christ without him nothing exists in him was life and life was the light of men see this is what god was telling adam as long as you choose me you have life he is not talking literally about physical death yeah or we can call it this way immediate physical death oh uh he wait and dhamal she fell down no no what god said is that you will not have life means the life that is there in christ you will not have and this is exactly what john explains the light shines in darkness the darkness does not comprehend it in fact the darkness doesn't want light okay so this poor eve she touched yeah? and she didn't die nothing happened to her and as i told you already the tree which of fruit of good and evil and the tree of life both looked good see if god had given you know one tree of knowledge of good and evil as you know with thorns or with that and thorns were not there actually but you know not good color things like that then god is himself cheating yeah he's cheating right he's giving you an ugly thing and he's telling you like don't choose that no both were good you know you were created like god so you should have made the right choice yeah so what happens here he says and it is true see this is the problem when people go to doctor oh the report you have this disease you have that disease blah, 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 blah. is the report wrong no that's a fact but what is the truth by his stripes you are healed yeah my daughter she tells me ma there is you know a free camp why don't you get blood test i said why should i go i know i'm walking in divine health since 15 years why should i go and you know test the lord am i walking in you know am i having any disease i will not go i will not go even if i feel something i'll sit and pray and it will go away and i know that is my experience yeah so the facts are true but the truth is in christ yeah she saw that the tree was good yeah it was good because that is how it was created pleasant to the eyes and looked desirable to make her wise she took the fruit and ate okay she also gave her husband and he ate see this is what happened lay that he ate she didn't die then she gave to her husband he said ah, what did god what did god say maybe it's not true also he ate but there was a death they did not die physically but this life of jesus you know it didn't go out of them that's why they didn't die immediately in their fallen state see that is what paul says do you not know when you offer yourself to someone as an obedient slave they should have listened to god and eaten from the tree of life the god said not to eat from this tree he didn't say don't eat from this tree he has given them two trees he said don't eat from this tree if adam had eaten from this tree we would have had immortality a glorified body free of disease but adam chose again see adam is not an idiot you know don't think 
like joseph prince always says that when you go to heaven you'll not be able to find uh, adam's house apparently uh, it is a secret because we'll all guess why did you go eat that fruit okay he is joking here no adam was not an idiot he was wise like god through cheating even today you have a mind of christ you have to be careful whether somebody is cheating you you know to to sin oh it's okay you're only watching pornography no no when you're watching pornography you're sinning against your wife or husband because you are doing the things that you are supposed to do with your husband or wife you are doing with another person though virtual because god said even if you look you're looking and doing right that is because i i mean that is what i feel because you have no intimacy with god you are not understanding the meaning of sex which we have done you know i have done a sermon on this the intimacy with christ will tell you the meaning of sex and then you'll enjoy sex with your husband or wife don't be cheated by the devil because you know this is what it says if you yield if you obey that's how death came because they obeyed the devil and ate suppose by mistake they had eaten maybe not because they very willfully willingly listened to the devil which he was not the devil actually god didn't make satan and put him there no the envy the the jealousy so you can imagine our position what it was how god has created us above all creation above angels he was envious i am created before adam but i am given a position below him so that's what uh, peter says again they speak great words of emptiness see great words of emptiness see when man tells you to sin see man doesn't actually tell you it is witchcraft you know we have done some eight lessons on witchcraft means you are under the influence of the devil yeah the same thing what happened in garden of eden is happened here there's serpent but here human beings yeah what as uh, peter say through lust of the flesh lewdness lewdness means dirty language you know who have actually escaped from those who live in error they promise you liberty they tell you hey enjoy no it is not enjoying because when you do these things you know that's what uh, paul says you are in bondage in your head you know next thursday we are going to do that then adam listened to serpent what actually happened to human beings okay for by whom a person is overcome by him also he will be brought into bondage this is very important god never makes you a slave everyone else which actually in short is just the devil whom god uses i mean sorry whom the devil uses he will bring you to bondage god see this is very important a lot of people say oh god use me even i said that but remember god loves you so much he's not going to use you he is never using you this is again what the church has taught and put so many protestants in bondage oh they will die and they'll go to hell where is it written in matthew 28 i think it is 20 uh, i don't know the verses the last few verses in the chapter he said go preach the gospel throughout the world did he say if you don't preach and they don't hear they'll die no this is like what you know eve is added if you even touch you'll die see god has created human beings after being born again through his death and resurrection the whole of humanity has the father son and holy spirit living in them not only christians please remember that because if you look at the life of some christians they are worse than hindus and muslims i will write and give you because i have a ministry for non christians i have seen the pity the the what to say uh, the kindness that the hindus and muslims have christians have only arrogance not all but most because oh we are chosen this is what the church the rotten american church has taught you that if you don't go and preach that how can you even think you're so great that you preach and somebody gets saved i don't know how it even goes into anybody's head that is pride and that is what the devil teaches that's why you know you do all these things 
not only that what happens is when you preach you are only controlling people you are not allowing the holy spirit to work through them the very first time that god told me now you are going to start preaching he only told me this your duty is only to speak i will put words in your mouth what happens to their hearts you know you cannot control only who is living in them the father son and holy spirit only they can do anything to their hearts you know what it lifted a big burden from my head but this is not what most pastors priests are doing they think they have to preach a great sermon and people will listen that is the most foolish thing that is exactly what peter is saying that's exactly what paul is saying so what happened yeah don't ever think that god made adam or eve any church has taught you that please god is not like the pastors and the priests i want to tell you that please they are not like that you know testing and all this nonsense that is still preached even when i went for to this seminar you know people oh god i said what are you talking only the devil will make you do see that is what he was doing to eve he's testing whether she knows and then he came to know she doesn't know he put her in hell that's exactly what he did and see if he wanted to test you know he would have, god would have not told adam what is going to happen he very clearly said if you do this baba you're going to die means simply means you'll be separated from my life and the life is only in christ that you got to understand okay every every tree you can eat except this tree you cannot eat okay so what happens they ate now here is the thing satan did something or lucifer did something which he is not supposed to do he made man do something he is not supposed to do both have fallen both have fallen satan took angels with him they say in revelation that literally see god has created we cannot count that many angels okay numerous angels one third they just think that one third of them lucifer took yeah and he became demons or whatever so on that particular day on in that time when satan or lucifer did this to mankind he fell so did man fall now guess what the allegiance of the man went to satan because he obeyed him and because lucifer disobeyed god god threw him out but he still had the authority of man because adam gave the authority to him so in the book of job you can see that time to time satan is going and talking to god though god threw him out no this secondary authority that man gave that he was using and only when jesus came was this authority taken back now there is a problem yeah god said if you eat you will surely die which simply means that you will lose your spirit connection to my son and me and the holy spirit now then he said that it is not just a like you know a legal language will take misdemeanor misdemeanor means you have done something which is very light like if you if i say like you know uh, uh, trespassers will be prosecuted you can't enter this area okay so what you do there is a nice mango tree there are some mangoes you simply go take the mangoes and you go out yeah you're not trespassing means you're not building a house there or you you know that's a misdemeanor which is a light thing but when there is a transgression okay i don't know how to explain this in um, telugu but okay these two words transgression means literally you have deprived somebody of their rights yeah a transgression which satan did which actually even adam did by depriving the whole human race of connection with god now that transgression cannot be taken back by saying sorry 
it is literally what judas did but even at that time if he had said sorry god would have forgiven him jesus would have forgiven him why because jesus was already incarnated but here jesus was not there yeah so in this incarnation yeah if adam had eaten from the tree of life he would have had immortality then this tree of the knowledge of good and evil would have not affected him in fact maybe that tree would have immediately died we do not know but because he did that yeah uh something happened i think the bright is getting late so we will stop here okay so remember it was a death it simply means that you were disconnected with the source of life
అయితే ఒక విషయాన్ని మనం మా ఇక్కడ మనం చూస్తే అదే విధంగా పేతురు వారు మాట్లాడుతున్నటువంటి మాటల్లో మనం చూస్తే వీరు వ్యర్థమైన డంపపు మాటలు పలుకొచ్చు అని మనం చూసిన వ్యర్థమైన డంపపు మాటలు అంటే చూడండి ఆ రోజున మరి ఆదా మామ పడిపోవడానికి గల కారణం ఏంటంటే వారు అక్కడ సర్పము మాట విన్నట్టుగా మనం చూస్తున్నాం ఈ రోజులైతే మానవులు మరి లోకంలో ఉన్నటువంటి వారి మాటలు వింటా ఉన్నారు ఇంకా మన శరీర సంబంధమైన దురాశలు గలవారై ఇలా ఫోనోగ్రఫీలు ఇలా రకరకాలుగా మరి వ్యతిరేకమైన పనులు చేసి దేవుని తప్పు ఆ తప్పు మార్గం ముందు నడుస్తున్నటువంటి స్థితిని మనం లోకంలో చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం కాబట్టి ఆ విధంగా మరి పేతురుగా రాస్తున్నట్టుగా మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటున్నాం మరి అంత మాత్రమే కాదు కానీ చాలామంది ఏమంట ఉంటారు అంటే మరి దేవుడు మనల్ని వాడుకొని వదిలేస్తాడని చెప్తా ఉంటారు దేవుడు ఎప్పుడు మనల్ని అలా చూడాలని ఎందుకంటే దేవుడు మనల్ని ఎప్పుడు ప్రేమించే దేవుడు అయి ఉన్నాడు అనే విషయం మనము గుర్తు పెట్టుకోవాలి చూడండి దేవుడు ఎప్పుడు మనల్ని విడిచిపెట్టే దేవుడు కాదు మరి నిజంగా చాలా మంది చూడండి ఎంతో మంది మనం చూసినట్లయితే క్రైస్తవులోనే మరి ఎంతగానో అరగంట ఎంతో వ్యతిరేకమైన స్వభావం కలిగి ఉంటారు చాలా మంది మరి అదే హిందూస్లో కొందరు ఉంటారు చాలా మంది మంచి వాళ్ళు కూడా ఉంటారు వారు నిజంగా క్రీస్తు ఎరిగినప్పటిని కూడా మంచి స్వభావం కలిగి ఉంటారు కొందరైతే క్రైస్తవులు మరి దేవుని ఎరిగినా కూడా మరి చాలా మరి తప్పు మార్గంలో నడుస్తూ లోక సంబంధమైనటువంటి మార్గంలో నడిచే ప్రజలు చాలా మందిని మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటాం కాబట్టి మనం ఒక విషయాన్ని జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాలి ఏంటంటే 
మనకి ఏదైతే సంభవిస్తుందో మనం ఏదైతే ప్రసంగిస్తున్నామో అవన్నీ విషయాన్ని మనం చాలా జాగ్రత్తగా ప్రసంగించేవారుగా మనం ఉండాలి చూడండి మరి మేడం గారు మరి ఈ యొక్క గూగుల్ మీట్ ఈ ప్లాట్ఫామ్లో ప్రారంభించక ముందు మరి దేవుడు తెలియజేసిన మాట ఏంటంటే నీ నీ పని కేవలము ప్రసంగించడం మాత్రమే మిగతా దంతా వాళ్ళ హృదయంలో వాక్యం నాగడం నా పని అని దేవుడు తెలియజేస్తాను ఇప్పటి నుండి మేడం గారు మన గురించి కావచ్చు ఎవరి గురించి ఆలోచించడం మానేశారు ఎందుకంటే వాక్యం ప్రసంగించడం వారి పని కానీ ఆ యొక్క వాక్యం నాటడం అనేది దేవుని పని తండ్రి అయిన దేవుడు కుమారుడైన యేసు ప్రభుని వారే మరి పరిశుద్ధాత్మ దేవుని పని ఏంటిది అది మన పని కాదు కానీ చాలా మంది ప్రసంగికులు మరి బోధించడంతో పాటు అదే అలా చేయాలి ఇలా చేయాలి అలా ఉండు ఇలా ఉండు విద్య యాజ్యాన్ని ఇలా రకరకాలుగా మరి సంఘాన్ని మరి చేసుకున్నటువంటి వారు చాలా మందిని మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటాం కాబట్టి ఒక విషయం మనం జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాలి దేవుని నుండి మనం దూరం అవుతున్నామంటే అది దేవుని ద్వారా కలిగిన కాదు అపవాది ద్వారా కలిగిందని మనం గుర్తుపెట్టుకోవాలి మరి అపవాది పడి మరి మరి సాతాన్ని పడిపోయినటువంటి ఆ యొక్క విధానం మనం చూస్తే మరి ప్రకటన గ్రంథంలో చూస్తాం కదా ఎన్నో మంది మరి వారు దురాత్మలుగా మార్చబడ్డారు మరి దాదాపుగా వన్ బై థర్డ్ ఒకటి ఒకటి మూడవ వన్ వన్ బై థర్డ్ అంత మరి సాతాన్ యొక్క సంబంధించినటువంటి గుంపు ఆ దురాత్మ సమూహం అంతా వారు పడిపోయినట్టుగా మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటున్నాం కాబట్టి ఇక్కడ మనం చూస్తే ఆదము అవ్వవారు వారు మరి భౌతికంగా వారు చనిపోలేదు కానీ వారి యొక్క స్వభావము చచ్చిన స్వభావం మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటున్నాం దేవునికి వ్యతిరేకత కలిగిన స్వభావం మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటాం అందుకని మనం చూస్తే మరి దేవుని నుండి మరి వారు దూరపరచబడ్డారు దేవునితో కలిగిన యొక్క సత్సంబంధం దూరం అయిపోయినట్టుగా మనం చూస్తున్నాం యోగ గ్రంథంలో మనం చూసిన రీతి కాదు దేవునికి వారు దూరంగా వెళ్ళిపోయినట్టుగా మనం చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం మధ్యలో ఉన్నటువంటి సత్సంబంధం కోల్పోయినట్టుగా మనం చూస్తూ ఉంటున్నాం ఇంకా అర్థం మాత్రమే కాదు అప అపరాధములు ఇవన్నీ గురించి మనం చూస్తున్నాం అపరాధములు అంటే ఒక వ్యక్తి మరొక వ్యక్తి నుండి దూరంగా వెళ్ళిపోవడము అని తను అర్థమై ఉంటుంది ఇంకా వీటి గురించి మనం నెక్స్ట్ వచ్చే సెక్షన్లో మనం ఇంకా లోతుగా మనం నేర్చుకుంటాం so we pray today that you understand that you are in such a envious position how much god loves you he has created you not that he can hit you whenever you do wrong that is what oh you are a sinner don't listen to this nonsense he has created you to like himself he has given you life you are so much of envy to the devil so you are in an envious position you are going to spend eternity with the with the lord jesus christ and the triune god in immortality in health in wealth and happiness and believe me eternity is here eternal life is here when you know that and you understand your identity how good you, how great you are in the eyes of god if you truly understand that you will live a life without poverty without uh, sickness without any strife in your relationship with others because you will be like the triune god always focusing on serving always focusing on loving whomever you meet okay nobody see when you love somebody nobody can hate you not at all yesterday i was re- reading one uh, this one where a criminal okay he was a murderer he was going and he heard a child crying in a dustbin and guess what he couldn't stop he went to pick that child and he literally looked after this child the his life changed yeah even a criminal can change you know if you are like a child and you love so today i pray that you understand god loves you what a position you are in his sight you take it seriously and don't fall for witchcraft don't be an instrument of the devil don't be a serpent yeah we'll pray kavati prarthan cheskundam mari maraku criminal gurinchi vaadithe telichestam nundi chudandi ikka ento criminal ante manaku telusu alanti vyakti oka sthalam lo maraku chinna baavu padipinatundi chinna pillavadu cha padipina sthitin chusi ventane teesukoni mari మాన స్వభావం తల్లి ఒక మంచి తండ్రి తీసుకొని ఆ బాబు నెట్టుకొని అలా దాని తర్వాత తన జీవితమే మార్చబడి ఉన్నదంటండి అలా ఒక క్రిమినల్ హృదయాన్ని మార్చుకున్నప్పుడు 
మనము ఎంత అటువంటి వారు దేవుని కనపరిస్తులు ఒక చిన్న పిల్లల వారు మనం దేవుడు అంతకంటే ఎక్కువ మనల్ని ప్రేమిస్తున్నాడు కాబట్టి ప్రార్థన చేసుకుంటాం మహాపరిశుద్ధుడ మహోన్నతుడ శివాల ప్రతినిధి మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ఇదే కాల సమయంలో మీరు అనేక విషయాలు మీరు మాతో మాట్లాడుతూ వచ్చిన విధానం బట్టి మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం అయ్యా మమ్మల్ని కలిగి చేసిన విధానం ఆదమ యొక్క స్వభావం గురించి మరలా మీరు ధ్యానించడానికి ఇచ్చిన కృపకాయ మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం సమస్తం పైన మీరు మాకు అధికారం ఇచ్చారని మేము నమ్ముతున్నాం తండ్రి ఇదిగో దేవానికి వందనాలు ఇప్పటి వరకు విద్యబడిన ప్రతి మాటకే మీకు స్తోత్రాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి తండ్రి ఇదిగో ప్రభా ఆ దినం నా తండ్రి ఆదాము అవ్వవారు నా ప్రభా అప్పవాది యొక్క కుయుక్తి మాటలు ద్వారా ఏ విధంగా అయితే పడిపోయారు ఈ లోకంలో నా తండ్రి లోకంలో ఉన్నటువంటి మనుషుల ద్వారా అనేకమైన పరిస్థితుల ద్వారా మేము కుయుక్తిగా దిగజారిపోకుండా పడిపోకుండా నిశ్చయంగా ధైర్యంగా నిలబడ్డానికి కావాల్సిన పరిశుద్ధ ఆత్మ శక్తి మా అందరికీ అనుగ్రహించమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి దేవానికి వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి హీరో ప్రభావం క్లుప్తంగా ప్రతి వచనాన్ని ధ్యానించడానికి మీరు ఇచ్చిన సమయాన్ని బట్టి మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ప్రతి వృక్ష ఫలము మీరు మా కొరకే చేస్తారని మేము నమ్ముతున్నాం తండ్రి మేము ప్రతి దానిపై నేలుబడి చేసేవారికి ఉండాలని మేము నమ్ముతున్నాం తండ్రి అయ్యా ఈ రోజున నా తండ్రి మేము ఎంతగానో నా తండ్రి మీరు మాకు ఇచ్చిన అధికారం మరచిపోయి ప్రభావ మేము అధికారంలో నిలబడలేనటువంటి స్థితిలో మేము ఉన్నట్లయితే మమ్మల్ని క్షమించండి మీరు ఇచ్చిన అధికారంలో నా తను గుర్తిరగడానికి కృప చూపెట్టండి ఏ అనారోగ్య సమస్యకి నా తను ఏ బలహీనతకు నా తండ్రి ఏ పేదరికానికి మా గృహాల్లో మాకు స్థలం లేదని మీరు మాట్లాడారు ప్రభా నిజంగా మీరు శోధించే దేవుడవు కాదు ప్రభా ఆ అనారోగ్య సమస్యను పెట్టి నా తను పరిశీలించే దేవుడవు కాదు శోధించే దేవుడవు కాదని మీరు తెలియజేసిన మాటకే స్తోత్రాలు మీరు మా పట్ల కలిగిన ప్రేమకై మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం మీ ప్రేమను ప్రతి ఒక్కరూ అర్థం చేసుకోవడానికి కావాల్సిన మనస్సును దయచేయమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ఇదిగో ప్రభానికి వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ఈ సమయంలో ప్రభానికి వందనాలు ప్రతి ఒక్కరు హృదయాన్ని అతను మీరు మార్చమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం అయ్యా నామక అర్థమైన క్రైస్తవుల వల్ల మేము అందరం ఉండకుండా ప్రభా నిజంగా నీ హృదయాన్ని కలిగిన ప్రజలుగా మేము ఉండడానికి సహాయం చేయండి అయ్యా ఇది నిన్ను కలిగి ఉన్న మేము క్రీస్తున్న లోకానికి పరిచయం చేసే వారు ఉండడానికి సహాయం చేయండి మా క్రియల్లో మా మాటలు ఉన్న తండ్రి మా యొక్క ఆలోచనలు ప్రతి దాంట్లో ఉన్న తండ్రి మా ప్రవర్తనలో మా సాక్ష్యంలో ప్రతి దాంట్లో నిన్ను కనపరచడానికి సహాయం చేయమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం ఇదిగో నా ప్రభావ మేము ఎక్కడ ఉన్న తండ్రి ఒక వెలుగు వల్ల వెలిగించబడడానికి సహాయం చేయమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం పరిశుద్ధ ఆత్మ తండ్రి మీరు నా ప్రభా తండ్రి కుమారు పరిశుద్ధ ఆత్మ నామంలో ప్రభా మీరు ఏకమై ఏ విధంగా అయితే ఉన్నారో ఆ కుటుంబంలో మమ్మల్ని పాలుబాకస్తులుగా మారు మమ్మల్ని మార్చడానికి వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి కోల్పోయిన అధికారము కోల్పోయిన నా తండ్రి మహిమను కోల్పోయిన సమస్తాన తండ్రి మీరు మాకు మరల అనుగ్రహించిన విధానంకై మీకు స్తోత్రాలు చెల్లించుకుంటున్నాం ఈ దినంన ప్రతి బిడ్డని నామంలో బ్లెస్ చేస్తున్నాం తండ్రి అయ్యా మీరు ఇచ్చిన వాక్యంకై వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం వారికి ఉన్న ప్రతి ట్రాన్స్గ్రెషన్ ప్రతి అయ్యా అపరాధములు ప్రతి మీరు కొట్టివేసినందుకు మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి మా పట్ల మీరు కలిగిన గొప్ప ప్రణాళికకై మీకు వందనాలు మమ్మల్ని ప్రేమిస్తున్నందుకు అయ్యా మమ్మల్ని నా తండ్రి మీరు నా ప్రభు ఎప్పుడు జాలి హృదయంతో తండ్రి హృదయంతో మమ్మల్ని చూస్తున్నారని మేము నమ్ముతున్నాం తండ్రి ఇది వరకు నా తండ్రి నాటబడిన ప్రతి అనేక బోధనలు నా ప్రభ అయ్యా మీరు దే ద్వేషించే దేవుడు అని మీరు నా ప్రభ మీరు మమ్మల్ని అయ్యా శిక్షించే దేవుడు అని ఇలాంటి ఆలోచనలు కలిగిన ప్రతి రాంగ్ టీచింగ్స్ అన్నింటినీ నా తండ్రి మీరు రక్తంతో శుద్ధి చేయమని అయ్యా వాటిని తుడిచివేయమని ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ప్రతి గృహాన్ని మీ యొక్క రక్తం కొట్టు ముద్రిస్తున్నాం ప్రతి బిడ్డని మీ నామంలో బ్లెస్ చేస్తున్నాం తండ్రి మేడం బట్టి మీకు వందనాలు వారిని వారి ఫ్యామిలీని మీ నామంలో బ్లెస్ చేస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ఇచ్చిన మంచి టీచింగ్స్ని బట్టి మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తూ సమస్తమైన ఘనత ప్రభావంలు మీకు ఆరోపిస్తూ దినచర్య అంతా మీ చేతకి సమర్పించుకుంటూ మీరే మహిమ ఘనత ప్రభావం తెచ్చుకోవాలి ఏ సున్నామలు ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి ఆమెన్ shalom to all of you enjoy your week enjoy with family yeah and be blessed remember you are the apple of your daddy's eye daddy loves you more than anybody and anything on this earth among all the stars you are the best okay so see you all next thursday shalom and enjoy the week